So the more accurate your transfer is, the much more smooth sailing you will have when stitching. And so I'm going to show you the way that I found it easiest to do that and hopefully that will help you on your journey of embroidering your own home. So to begin, you will need a hoop loaded with the fabric of your preference. I really love using a cotton linen blend. Now, the most important part probably of this home portrait transfer is going to be a straight edge. So I recommend using something small like a gift card you have lying around. And then you, of course, you will also need the home portrait PDF pattern, whether you've purchased that from my shop or you've sketched it out yourself. Now from here, there are two different routes you can take. You can choose to transfer your home portrait with the friction erasable gel pen. This pen, when you use it, the ink goes on black and then when you're done or want to remove it, you just hit it with some heat like a blow dryer and it totally disappears as long as you're working on a lighter colored fabric. And something acting as a light source like a window, iPad screen, laptop screen, or light table. Or you can use graphite paper found at your local craft store and just like a normal pen you have lying around the house and so it's really up to you as to how you want to transfer it but maybe this video will help and give you some clarity as to which route you want to go first I'm going to show you how to use the friction erasable gel pen so for this I have my light table which is my iPad screen I'm placing my home portrait PDF pattern on top of my screen and then I am lining my hoop up to be centered around that now I think it's really important here to note that when I'm placing this on my pattern, I'm doing my best to line it up so that the threads of the fabric are going horizontally and vertically. Um, that will be very helpful when stitching and not doing something where it's lined up diagonally. Because homes are very like straight and have perfect lines, it just makes it a lot easier if we kind of help the hoop by lining it up horizontally and vertically and that comes especially in handy when stitching brick. Once the hoop fabric is all lined up I am simply going to take my friction erasable gel pen and I'm going to hold my hoop there so that it's nice and steady. I don't want it to be moving around or else things won't be lined up anymore. So I'm going to hold it in place and I'm simply going to begin um, sketching. I'm also killing the lights in this room because there's a lot of light that goes into making this video but it's actually very difficult to see so I do recommend kind of doing this in a darker place so that you can see the lines of your pattern shining through whatever it is you're using as a light source. So here I am just beginning to trace and I'm going to start with the landscaping and yeah just trace all the landscaping it's pretty straightforward just tracing Now that my landscaping is done, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the house. And this is where that gift card is really going to come in handy for giving us some like perfectly straight lines because that's really what we want. It'll just make it easier to stitch whenever we're on to that step. Basically all that I'm going to be doing here is tracing the entire house with the help of this straight edge to keep things pretty nice, tidy, and perfect.
Now, once I'm nearing the end, I think it's good to kind of check all your bases to see that you have everything done. But sometimes whenever we pull it off, it's not, we might have missed a spot. And so I did that here on one little section. And so I can either choose to line this back up and find its right position or just eyeball it in and we'll be good to go from there. And so that completes the transferring part. And then to get myself stitching ready from here, what I'm going to do is untwist the knob, take my fabric out, then I'm going to add a blank piece of fabric underneath. This will just help keep the light out and make you not able to see all of the strands of thread in the back. And it just kind of gives the hoop a little bit of a firmer foundation in the back. So I'm going to add that in and then I'm going to place my, my transferred fabric onto the hoop and then put the outer hoop back on. And before tightening the knob, I'm going to make sure my home portrait is nice and centered so I don't have to move things around once I'm done. So once it's centered, I'm going to twist the knob a little bit and begin to pull on the edges and twist it some more and continue pulling until it is as I desire. Um, and when you're doing this, you'll kind of notice that some of your straight lines might be a little bit like saggy or pulled down just because it is fabric, like it's not paper or something permanently straight. It's so flexible. And so during this stage, you kind of want to manipulate the fabric so that the lines are back straight again. And um, yeah, just kind of pull the fabric in the direction you need it to straighten out any lines that have kind of been bent. And from there, you'll be stitching ready. So this was the first method using the friction erasable gel pen. And so now I'm going to go ahead and show you what transferring a pattern onto your hoop looks like using graphite paper. So this method is set up very similarly. As I have my loaded hoop prepared, I'm placing a piece of graphite paper that fits into the hoop in there. And then I am going to go ahead and cut out my pattern so that it fits inside of this. Once it's trimmed down to size, I'm going to place it inside of my hoop face up. And you could go ahead and tape this down to kind of make it more secure, but I'm just going to hold it in place here. And so basically what I'm going to do is pretty much the same thing as I did with the friction erasable gel pen, except that I'm just using a normal pen right now and I'm just going to trace everything. So I'm going to start with the landscaping again and it's very crucial with this transfer that you really don't make it move because once it moves, um, your whole pattern is going to be moved and it won't be erasable like the friction erasable gel pen is and so you want to be very conscious of that while you are tracing so here i'm tracing the landscaping first and then i'm going to use that same idea of using the gift card to trace all of the straight lines and that is basically it so whenever you are tracing over everything all the lines here what it's doing is like pushing the graphite wherever you push down with the pen onto your fabric and so you will just replicate this onto your fabric. So this is what my project looks like once I remove my pattern and I remove the graphite paper and also be very careful when you peel it off because when I did that subtle movement I actually like scraped a little bit of graphite onto it so just be very cautious of that. And here's what my hoop looks like. Everything transferred really well, except like where I did forget some things, like a little part on the door, as well as like the bottom base of the porch. I forgot those sections, but I can kind of add those back in with the friction pen, maybe, or a pencil. Um, and so that is something you want to be very careful of with this pattern, is don't peel it off until you are confident you're done transferring. And so this is just two examples of ways that you can transfer a home portrait onto fabric. Um, I've done the friction erasable gel pen many, many times and I love that method. And this was actually the first time I did the graphite paper. I just wanted to do this to show you different ways you can do this in case you don't have access to the friction pen. And so both of these work very well. 
And so it's just up to you to decide which one you want to do or what you prefer. And now there are other methods out there as well. The only one I probably wouldn't recommend is something that's water soluble where you have to dunk your whole embroidery in a bowl of water. That just doesn't sit well with definitely not watercolor paint. And then some of the tiny fragile stitches I do like super long straight stitches would not mix well. So I would steer clear of that one. Thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, would you go ahead and hit that like button to support my channel? I also have a few other home portrait tutorial videos on my channel that you might be interested in, so go ahead and check those out. And until next time, my friends, happy stitching!